I'm in and around central Manitoba. This is four hours north of Winnipeg, roughly 400 kilometers. And I'm staying at Moak Lodge. You got the campground and the cabins there. It is an amazing launch point for so many things. Uh, most notably, it's on Cedar Lake. Okay, giant trophy pike, giant trophy walleye. But I woke up this morning and we've got some questionable weather. There was some precipitation, which I don't like. There was some wind and the big water gets a little nuts. So there are smaller lakes nearby. We filmed on the side of this very highway hitchhiking for trout at a small lake. Uh, there's a Saskatchewan River where you can catch hundreds of walleyes. It's an incredible fishery. Today, I drove 40 minutes north to the middle of nowhere to a lake I've not been to before. This is Little Limestone Lake. It's a Marl Lake, M-A-R-L. It's the largest of that type in the entire world. It is a bright turquoise color, and I'm gonna see if I can find a boat launch, put the brand new boat in, find out if there's fish in this lake, if they look unique based on the very bright, interesting colored water. You're watching Uncut Angling, which is made possible by Travel Manitoba, Alumacraft Boats, Yamaha Outboards, Shimano Reels, G Loomis Rods, Fraybill Gear, Plano Tackle Storage, Humbert Electronics, and Minn Kota Trolling Motors. This episode is presented by Travel Manitoba and filmed in Manitoba's northern region. Are you hanging out here for a while? A little bit. So you could come for a boat ride, but I'm doing filming, so I don't know, like, are you opposed to being involved with that or? Well, how long are you going to be on the water? Well, I can rip back here and drop you off whenever you want. Yeah? Yeah? Okay, so what's your name? I'm Blake. You sure you're not Harry Potter? I'm sure. Okay, nice to meet you, Blake. What's your name? Aaron. Aaron. So Blake's uh, hanging out here at the boat launch at Little Limestone, so we're going to bring him out for a boat ride, maybe some fishing. You probably don't have a fishing license, eh? I actually do. You do? Perfect. The goal, I think, is to catch one pike and one walleye, just to see kind of what they look like in this water and go from there. I mean, there could be really big fish in this lake. I'm imagining if we find any weeds, chances are there'll be good pike in there and if there's any deep main lake structure that'll have walleyes so time to see what lurks in little limestone lake manitoba i'm blake hello do you film a lot of fishing shows usually is that kind of your thing on weekends and stuff yeah side hobby i suppose okay i like to fish a bit what's your biggest uh pike i got a 42 incher when i was 10 years old wow what's your biggest so. walleye uh nothing to mention i don't think Okay, here, no. put, put this on. I'm gonna do a quick lap of that bay, that bay, that bay, that bay, see if I can find any green weeds. Uh, the deeper the weeds are, the greener the weeds are, the better. Chances are this main lake, uh, these main lake points are gonna be the best place to catch walleye. So as I go by there, I'll be watching for fish on the screen. I don't know how deep this lake is, but the walleye this time of year are gonna be in deeper water. So we will see what we can find and associated to that main basin because I, I don't imagine there's going to be super deep water. So if there's 20 or 30 feet, those walleyes are going to be right close to it. 16 feet so far, but we're not in the biggest part of the lake at all. So much turquoise. Look at that freaking water. Oh man, right there. Look at this. Deep, deep weeds. Come look, come look, Blake. See on the graph? Yep. That's deep weeds. Okay. And then and then none. That's a good thing. The, the, the worst enemy is when you go into some of these bays and there's endless weeds because then there's like no concentrated. But if you find just a little pocket like that, it could be really good. Right. Especially with that being the proximity at the mouth of this bay here. That could be a huge concentrator. And the fact that they're really deep, that was in 12 feet of water. That's going to be a good summer spot potentially. Nice. So what's your strategy? What's our strategy? What's plan? Very good question. We're going to go on two different presentations. I'm going for Pinky. Water wolf lures, big swim bait. Okay. And I'm gonna put you on just a generic spoon. It is a big spoon, so it's still for big fish. Yeah. But uh, you're gonna be more covering water and seeing if you can catch anything. And I'm gonna be like, really looking <laughs> for a, a monster. And we can switch up or put two swim baits on. Okay. I know you're like, why do you get that giant bait? Yeah. So you're using basically just a flipping stick, which is like a bass flipping stick. Have you heard of that before? No, I haven't. I have to confess that I haven't really used bait casters. I'm uh, nervous of making a fool of myself, I guess. Yeah, especially on camera and all. <laughs> so when you press that button down with your thumb, yeah. press it down and hold the spool, okay? Yeah. And then you just like cast and let go. Cast it out. Okay. When, when you go for the wind up here, you can do a practice right now. When you go for the wind up, use your other hand, so your left hand, put it on the butt of the rod as a control. Okay. Yeah. And then you can put it, I mean, is this posting your way? Not really. Okay, no. so nice smooth fluid motion. And now, oh, oh, you, yeah, you really went for it. 
Um, oh, you don't want to let that loose line yeah. just go for it. Eh? You want to keep your right thumb on the on the spool. Okay. And just have a little bit of tension on it. Yeah. And then right as it's hitting the water, you kind of bring it to a stop. Okay. The danger is when it like over spools when it. Right. We're gonna S back out there. These two waypoints are either end of that cabbage band. So I'm going to S it a bit more and the cabbage band's likely running this way. So I'm going to just uh, mark out exactly where all the weeds are and then we're going to fish it. So any second here, we're going to see that weed start up again. Right about there. You can see there's the first strand and there's a bunch more. So we're going to drive through it. Wow, that is nice, deep 13 foot weed. <laughs> this could be the best spot on the whole lake. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so now that I'm through it, I'm going to switch to all sonar here. And then I'm going to scroll back and put a waypoint on either side of this clump of weeds. So I'm going to scroll back, waypoint, then scroll to the other side, waypoint. Now when we go back to our map, we've got two sets of waypoints marking kind of four corners, but it could be a thicker strip yet, we don't know. But at least we're getting reference points in there so we know what we fished, what we haven't fished. Okay, let's do a drift. Just kind of be mindful of where you cast, because if you cast there once, then the next time you kind of alternate it, and then as we drift, you can kind of go back over those same areas, because it'll start to refresh. And so just a slow, steady retrieve? Yeah, slow, steady retrieve. I like how you're keeping it in the water. What, what could happen is you could have a follow right to the edge of the boat, and then you kind of like just drag it in the water right beside the boat and let the fish have one last chance of eating it. Right. You just don't and if wanna... that happens, like, is there a Watch drag? Spot. Let's say he's following. Yeah. I just go like this. And I could go in a big circle just to keep it in the water. Basically, you just want to keep it swimming away from him. Mm -hmm. the, the worst thing to do is if you're bringing it in, you just don't want to like have it come in like this because yeah. then the fish follows it in and you just don't give it a chance. Exactly. Man, I'm nervous to see what kind of weeds this is. It doesn't even make sense that there'd be that deep of weeds. Did you mention milfoil or something before? Yeah, but you basically you want broad leaf. Okay. The thin stuff, not so good. That being said, if this is the only weed that we have available on the whole lake, oh, that's the good stuff right there. Oh. So we just made a, a great discovery here. We are seeing just these junky spindly weeds and see how not life giving that is. And then we just found this. Look at how lush and green that is. You want broadleaf weeds. This means that our chances of catching a pike here are substantially larger. Aaron's happy. My confidence just went through the roof compared to those other weeds. Mm -hmm. I honestly cannot believe we found this nice of weeds that didn't get bit on that first pass. Disappointing. It's like, a, like, there's no point really doing this pass, so we're gonna do one more pass. We're doing, we're covering different water, but it's like a courtesy pass, maybe that's the word, just because the weed looks so good. Just make sure you do your diligence. Yep. I'm just curious what kind of adaptations a fish here would need, like with this kind of water. I guess Lake Winnipeg isn't exactly clear, but no, I don't I mean, know if... Oh, what's going on, what's going on? Something weird oh. happened, it's a fish, here we go. <laughs> okay. You gonna get the net? Yeah, it's close here. We're just talking about whether there's even fish in this lake and something eats the swim bait. It's a good one too. Okay. Yeah. No, right. no rush, no rush, no rush. No rush. Just, hook, <laughs> just nice and smooth when you get a chance. Head first. Okay. There you go. You got him. Nice. Okay, leave, leave him down there in the water. Just drop it down a bit. There there's go. life in Little Limestone Lake. Kind of has like a murky color to it. Yeah. Oh, that is hilarious. Right when. Things were starting to get discouraging. <laughs> and that's a nice pike. Look at how light it is. Such a cool looking pike. Put him right back in the water. Nice. On the board! <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> cool. Pike candy right there. Yep. Water wolf lures, Shadzilla. I mean, I don't know if the color really matters, but it seemed to work on that one. It stands out so funny against that blue water. It's like a big gummy bear or something. They say we keep poking around. Well, I don't want to... You want to go? Yeah, okay. if it's a convenient time. It doesn't matter. Okay. It's too bad you didn't catch that fish. Honestly, just being out in the water has uh, been a real treat. So we dropped off Blake, and you can see behind me there was like a beach scene happening. Like there's all of a sudden dozens of people swimming. I'm going to go try and catch a walleye now. We got the pike. Check. Now it's time to find a walleye. Empty box. We're ripping around.
around looking for deep water for the walleyes. Found a little bit more cabbage here. So we're gonna do a pike detour. Yeah, thumped. Thumped. What do we got? Not big. Another pike though. And that's like second cast in this spot. So that's a good sign. This one's nice and light too. Come here, bud. Wow, is he ever light. Just shows you that this bait Definitely not too big when fish like this are eating it. Very cool pike. Oh, <laughs> so cool. I made no effort to make a depth map. All that I did was drive the spot and it turned into an amazing depth map. So again, there's the cabbage on the screen. I est over top of this. I think it's kind of like a bit of a reef with cabbage around it. So I made a waypoint kind of on each corner, but you've got the auto chart live that just turned that into a map on this Humbird Helix immediately. So now we've got a depth map with the waypoints around there of where the cabbage is. So very, very functional. And that was about the second cast. So there's probably more in there. Oh, I just got bumped. Come on, buddy, how big are you? Not super big. Boat side strike, awesome. Lost him. There we go. That's pretty big. I may want the net for this. Ugh. Come on. Come on. Not too big, nope. Cool. Another beautiful light colored pike. I mean, that's like silver almost. Look at this thing. That is just awesome looking. Oh man. Such cool pike. There he goes. Cabbage bed jack. Okay, Mr. Pelican. It's not a good scene. Mr. Pelican wants a pink swim bait, seemingly. You gonna go for it, buddy? Watch this. He's thinking about it. Oh, geez. This pelican's fishing me hard. I'm purposely using this monster bait to hopefully weed out the bigger fish, but I'm getting hit by everyone right now, it feels like. This weed bed has a lot of fish in it. There we go. Right in the wind gust. This one's not fighting too hard. Not quite. We'll get the fray below that one. Oh, geez. Oh. Another nice pike. Very cool colors on these guys. Look at how light he is. Awesome. Cool. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That was a big, big, big fish. Waypoint right now. Oh my goodness. Oh. My goodness, that was a 40 inch fish, I'm pretty sure. So I'm just getting organized here. I've calmed down a bit. I put the talon down at the back of the boat, vertical spike, just so everything is still now. I know where that fish is roughly in front of me. And I've taken off the bait, Water Wolf Lures, Shadzilla, that I just had that fish erupt on. And I'm putting on another one, just a slightly different color. This isn't necessary, necessarily. But when that fish sees this again, I want it to look like a brand new experience for it. And by the way, look at how well this bait's holding up. It's got a lot of body slashes in it, but the tail isn't even close to falling off. I've already caught probably 10 or a dozen pike on it and had lots of other hits and misses. Like it dwarfed everything that we've caught so far. Okay, here she goes. That is where I believe the fish is. I think that with how long we let this fish wait, we might get them instantly here. So obviously, things are tense. Come on, come on. Oh, I just had a hit. Oh, jeez. It was, it was a soft hit, and oftentimes that's a big fish because he just comes up to it and just closes his mouth on it, whereas a little fish is like way more yippy-yappy with it. So come on, come on. Okay, well, that whole plan didn't work out. I gotta get that fish. Like, that's the fish. Okay, old sneaky guide trick number 242. This is just a Rapla subwalk, pretty small. 
in terms of big pike baits, but it's a good throwback bait. And I wouldn't, I don't like covering water with this bait because you have to fish it kind of slow and whatnot, but it's pretty deadly little ticket when you know where there's a big one or big ones in an area. What else do we got? Maybe a bulldog? Ladies and gentlemen, should we or should we not try a bulldog? I don't know, man. There's a bulldog. It's just a big, bad twister tail, essentially. What do you think? Try the spoon quick and then, wouldn't it be funny to get it on the spoon? Wouldn't it be so funny? Try the spoon, then we'll dance. I mean, we got stuff to do here. Oh, I hate having not enough time. Okay, just a plain gold spoon. Maybe not so plain. Half red and white ripple on there. I'm using this on a GL2 swim bait rod. Seven foot 11. Like we got to get this fish. Now it's me versus this fish. This is where we're gonna be at the end of the day. This is where it's, ugh, oh, it's all come down to this fish. Oops. Didn't want to wage war with one fish. Oh, I got a fish on. Oh my goodness, 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 oh my goodness. It's right on the numbers, it's right on the waypoint. And I just lost him, and that time I stung him a little bit. Okay, we're gonna go do a lap of the rest of the lake. Just kind of a courtesy lap to make sure that we know where the deepest water is and just have a good vibe on thing, don't miss any main lake structure, any huge cabbage beds spanning half the lake, you know. Did a lap looking for deep water, looking for main lake structure. I didn't find much, so. That pike is just, man, I can't stop thinking about it. So I gotta try it a few times at different lighting and stuff. Get that net up here. This is a Frabo Conservation Series model 350029. This is a beautiful trophy walleye net. Tangle free mesh on here, conservation series but it's huge, so I can actually use it for pike quite nicely too. If I was targeting musky or specifically on a big pike trip, I'd probably have a big kahuna, like a specific musky net. But for this, we can quite nicely tuck it in there. I'm like working the, the perimeter, coming in super cautious, because I don't want the boat to all of a sudden be over top of them, right? Oh, I'm tense. Are we not gonna get this fish? You do start to wonder. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Easy game, easy game, easy game. Is he game? Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. No follow, same spot. Right on the numbers once again. Same spot, like that is the same spot that I've had three takes now. I saw him once, again that time I touched him more than I'd like to. This spot and this fish killed me. I don't know what the lesson to be learned is, but gotta go, gotta go. Well, I didn't conquer everything I set out to accomplish. No walleye, no 50 inch pike, but I got to see this amazing lake, Northern Manitoba, Little Limestone. It's a lake I've wanted to check out for a long time. And the turquoise appeal is real. I'm gonna be back here pursuing big pike. All the equipment links are usually in the description, but uh, this is a Waterwolf Lures Shadzilla swim bait, still intact after catching, I don't know, maybe 15 pike today. 12 inch, 200 pound fluorocarbon leader to 80 pound Power Pro braided line. Shimano Compre musky rod, a really nice all around rod. Eight foot six, nine foot is a really nice length for uh, multi-use pike and musky fishing. And the reel is a Shimano 401D Calcutta. Definitely get yourself to Little Limestone Lake. Just north of Grand Rapids, this is an amazing body water checkout. I wish we had a little bit more sun today. That water would have been that much more vibrant. There's lots of lodges and resorts and campgrounds in Grand Rapids. I'm staying at Moak Lodge. Great place to access all the area's options, including Little Limestone Lake. Manitoba, Canada's heart beats.